remains that today the topic which I am going to cover that is IS 16 property plant and equipment. Uh, we are supposed to discuss this topic in detail. What is IS 16? Uh, what is its recognition criteria, etc. All the aspects we will cover and at the end we will discuss how examiner will test this standard during your exams. What are the different uh, key areas of the standard those examiner are supposed to test as well as what are the methodologies examiner can use. First of all, I'm moving forward. Uh, what is the objective of this standard? The objective of IS-16 is to prescribe the accounting treatment of property, plant and equipment. Now, this is very important that what is the objective of this standard? is to describe the accounting treatment of what? Accounting is to describe the accounting treatment of property, plant and equipment. Property, plant and equipment. These are the three components like property, plant and equipment. This standard is supposed to deal how we are treat this standard, uh, these three components, property, plant, and equipment. Later on, we will discuss what is property, plant, and equipment. You know, like uh, the principal issues about these three things, property, plant, and equipment are about its asset recognition, how we will recognize property, plant, and equipment as an asset how to determine its carrying cost, what are the depreciation charges, and how impairment losses will be recognized. We are supposed to deal about all these things uh, in this standard. Now, we are supposed to discuss what is the scope of this standard. Means what type of the property, plant, and equipments are coming under the jurisdiction of IS-16, and what property, plants, and equipments are not part of IS-16, where this standard is not applicable. IS-16 applies to the accounting for property, plant and equipment, except when another standard requires or permits different accounting treatments, for example. Like, you know, there are two types of law. One is general law and one is specific law. This is the general law about property, plant and equipment. But if any other specific standard deals about these things, then we are supposed to account for that particular property, plant and equipment according to the rule of that particular standard, like is it classified as held for sale in accordance with IFRS 5, non current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. If it's about biological assets, Related to agricultural activities, then it is accounted under IS-41 agriculture. Like same, if it is about exploration and evaluation assets recognized in accordance with IFRS 6, then we will deal over there. Like same, mineral rights and mineral reserves such as oil, natural gas and similar non-regenerative resources will be dealt, will not be dealt under the scope of IS. 16 property plant and equipment this is very important area now we are supposed to discuss different definitions look first definition is about property plant and equipment what is this this is tangible assets this is first of all very important thing what is tangible asset tangible asset tangible assets. There are the one characteristic of the tangible asset is they have physical substance. This is important like tangible assets are the assets 
those have physical existence held by entity for more than one accounting period next condition is more than one accounting period this is also very important one accounting period means one accounting period consists of how many time uh, time period 12 months property plot and equipment are tangible assets held by the entity for more than one accounting period means its life expected life is more than one year next very important area for use where to use this is important in production and supply of goods and services i i am emphasizing on word production it's not about the product which you are producing this is the anything which is used in the process of production like if you have any machine which you are using to manufacture any product then that machine would be under the scope of is 16 that will be called property plant and equipment and the next thing is supply of goods or services for instance nowadays you know there is a lockdown and due to the lockdown you can't uh, go to any restaurant so you are supposed to get the things at your home so most of the restaurants are providing the services of take away for instance if you have ordered a pizza from mcdonald then they have one person who is coming and delivering that pizza at your doorstep the motor bike the vehicle which is used by their uh, the uh, boy who is supposed to deliver the pizza at, at your door doorstep that bike is used in the supply of goods or services that would that would be also a ppe for rental to others this is very important thing for rental to others why this is important because rental to others there is the same word is used under is 40 investment property over there there is a also word rental to others so how we will differentiate like if it is investment property which we will just discuss under is 40 then if you are renting that that would not be part of ppe here any machinery or any other thing which you are renting to any other and the second thing it's for occasional like you have a idle uh, vehicle you have rented to someone then it would be under the jurisdiction of property plant and equipment and for administrative purposes definitely you know every either manufacturing organization or wholesale or retailer what sort of the or services organization they have some admin offices over there you are using any furniture etc that that thing is that property plant or equipment if it is used for the administrative purpose then it would be under the scope of property plant and equipment again i am repeating this definition that property plant and equipment are tangible assets means they have physically substance first condition then second condition its life is more than one accounting period and it is used in the different areas like production supply of goods and services rented to others or to for administrative purpose then the next thing is next definition is depreciation over there very important thing is depreciation is a systematic allocation of depreciable amount over depreciable amount of an asset over its useful useful life now there are two important terminologies in this definition systematic allocation i am emphasizing on the word what systematic allocation sorry sorry for 